little while ago I made a video about camera gear that I think beginners really need and many of you found that video useful so today I want to do the opposite of that I want to talk about camera gear which I personally think that beginner photographers don't really need now this is not to say that these items don't have a purpose it's just if you're starting out or you want a very minimal and a very lean uh, photography kit then these items can be skipped. Also, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later. For 99% of photographers, monitor calibration is simply unnecessary. Before I explain why, let me talk about who would actually benefit from calibrating their monitor. Calibrated monitors are for commercial photographers. They're for people who need to get 100% color accuracy. Also, they're for people whose images will end up on TV, on the internet, on a billboard, in a magazine, in a newspaper, and on any surface and within any type of media imaginable. Also, calibrated monitors are for people who shoot products or cars. Therefore, they need to have the colors of the product or the car 100% match what's on the screen. But it's not as simple as just calibrating a monitor because in order to get accurate colors, just having a calibrated monitor is not good enough because you need to know a good reference point. So you will need to have one of those color checkers or gray cards and then take a photo of that in the ambient light of the product or whatever you're gonna shoot and then you have a reference point. And that's when the calibrated monitor comes in because then the entire process from start to finish has been controlled. The only exception to this I would say is if you've bought a really cheap horrible monitor for like 50 pounds and the colors are all over the place yes then running a color calibration on it will probably help you out however if you're using any modern laptop or decent monitor or to be honest any apple device because apple monitors uh, screens are very good you do not need to calibrate your monitor if anything what you need to do is make sure that your true tone and night mode are switched off because then that will definitely mess up your colors if you're just starting out, I would say filters are not essential for two reasons. First and foremost, they will add a layer of complexity to an already overwhelming um, subject or endeavor that you're pursuing, which is photography. It can be a lot to learn at once. And then when you add a filter on top, now you've got something else to take into consideration. And another reason is unless you spend a lot of money on a very good quality filter, you run the risk of having color casts or weird artifacts in your images. Now, the only filter that I would actually recommend would be a polarizer or a CPL filter, as it's also known. And if you're into taking photos of reflective surfaces where you can get some glare, so for example, cars, buildings, windows, uh, water, or any shiny surface, a CPL or a polarizer will definitely help you there. However, it is not essential. And the final filter, which in my opinion, is a bit of a gimmick and I'm still surprised people are pushing them are the pro mist filters soft focus whatever you want to call it bloom effect basically filters which promise to give you a filmic soft look I've tried those filters and in my experience I just didn't like the results and I found the highlights to be blown out and I found it to be very very overpowering and very unnatural if you do like that kind of look, fine, go for it, but just don't fall for all the hype online saying how these filters will make your photos magical. Uh, getting better at photography will make your photos magical, not a filter. Now, for the sake of clarity, when I say fast primes, I mean lenses which are typically f1.4, f1.2, even f1, in some cases. Now, these lenses are not bad. You know, I have two f1.4 lenses. I love them. The lenses are fantastic. It's just for most people, unless they specialize or they want to really concentrate on low light and nighttime photography, having ultra fast prime lenses is going to be a bit of a waste, to be honest. Because you see, if you're only shooting during the day, you'll never really be shooting wide open anyway. And if, let's say, you're at f4, the difference between the, let's say, 33mm f1.4 and the 35mm f2 is not going to be that noticeable. And when you're starting out, the last thing you want to be doing is all of a sudden carrying a bunch of heavy, bulky gear with you 
because let's face it, it's not going to be very enjoyable. So by all means, if you're going to get into nighttime photography, sure, go for a faster lens. But if you're only going to shoot during the day or you don't think you'll shoot at night very often, my suggestion is to save some money, save some space in your bag and get an F2 prime or basically a slightly slower prime and not the top of the range one. At this point, I want to say a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Squarespace. Now, aside from all the other things I've already told you about Squarespace, there is one little trick that I personally do to make it even more useful for me. Now, when you go on someone's social media profile, you will see a link in bio type of thing, where if you click on it, you'll go to a page which will have their website, their email, contact, or all that kind of stuff, right? So on Squarespace, I've made a brand new page and I've called it Links. And then I've added a bunch of colorful buttons which will take you the viewer to any part of my website that interests you the most. So aside from having a place on the internet where you can share your portfolio in any way you like, this is also another handy way to get people to go to your portfolio, to go to your website in a more efficient and a quicker way. So if this is something that interests you, then I do highly recommend Squarespace for this. You can use the link down below to set up a free trial and then even get 10% off your first purchase after your trial ends. Again, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you to you for watching this bit of the video. Staying on the subject of lenses, I would also refrain from splurging out on really expensive extreme focal length lenses. So for example, the Fuji 100 to 400 or the Fuji like eight to 16, something on those lines, because for most people, when they're starting out, they don't need those extreme focal lengths. Now, obviously there are some caveats to this. If you say to me, I wanna be a wildlife photographer, then obviously a 100 to 400, for example, is the lens that you probably wanna get. Equally, if you want to be an architecture photographer, then maybe a wide angle like the 8 to 16 will probably be a good lens for you. However, for most people who will just be doing city breaks, street photography and general photography, those two extremes are probably not the best way to spend your money, at least initially. And I talk from experience because even today, I own those two lenses. I own the 50 to 140 f2.8 and the 8 to 16 f2.8 and have a guess how often they're used about five percent of the time but the reason i still have them is because a this is obviously my job but b there are certain shots in particular that i need those lenses for and i know what shots they are so when i'm out and about in istanbul for example i don't carry those lenses with me i just carry my prime or my 24 to 70 and then when i come across something which will require those extreme lenses i will just bookmark it on my phone by just taking a photo and then i'll come back with that specific lens to get that specific shot when it comes to lenses less is definitely more so if you're just starting out grab yourself a standard 24 70 zoom lens grab yourself a 50 mil prime or maybe a 35 if you prefer a wider type of uh, composition and that's all you will need for the foreseeable future. Another huge money pit, and this is the one that I am the most guilty of, is thinking that you need to buy the most expensive, the most specced out computer that you can possibly find to edit your photos. And I know where all of this comes from. It comes from tons of YouTube channels which will do side-by-side -side tests and they will take Lightroom, they will load up 1000 images, apply 1000 presets to 1000 images, and then export 1000 images. They will time how long that process takes, and of course the computer which has, I don't know, 64 gigs of RAM and the best CPU will be, let's say, a minute faster than a computer that's a little bit cheaper. So then they say, oh look, it's a minute faster, da 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 da. You think to yourself, oh my god, that's a whole minute, I now need to go and spend 6000 pounds on a laptop. However, before you go and do that, just think to yourself, when's the last time I had to import and export 1000 photos? Is that actually a very realistic way for me to measure, you know, if that's worth my money or not? My point here is if you have the disposable cash, by all means, spec out your laptop. It is definitely very nice to edit on a fast machine. However, at the same time, don't think that saving 20 seconds every time you export your photos is going to be worth that kind of money if money is tight or if you don't have unlimited funds. 
And finally, there are the silly gimmicks, which I find in photography magazines, and I always ask myself, who on earth buys this crap? Because someone must do in order for them to keep advertising it. So I only have two that spring to mind right now. The first one is that a little while ago, there was this AI powered robot that you can put on top of your camera, you plug it in, and this AI thing will scan the whole scene and it will say, right, based on this scene and AI, they, they used AI quite a lot in there, you need to use F8, you know, 1 20th of a second, 200 ISO. And that will be the perfect setting to take that photo. Another thing I found was, and I, I've not used any of this stuff, so if you have, and it's, you know, the best thing since sliced bread, I welcome criticism and comments in, uh, in the comments. But there was this thing which is like a glass filter that you put over your lens and it's meant to auto set your white balance and always give you correct white balance. Now, I've done photography for long enough and I've always used auto white balance and I can only think of twice in the last few years where the camera got the white balance completely wrong and I had to change it myself. I'm not trying to, you know, crap on these companies. I'm sure the intentions were good and I'm sure there is a very niche market for these products somewhere. But yeah, if you're just starting out and you maybe you've bought a photography magazine that's full of this crap, just don't buy any of it. Literally, the only thing you need is one camera, one zoom lens, one prime lens and some sort of device like an iPad or a MacBook to edit your photos on. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you have found this video somewhat useful. If you have, leave your opinion down in the comments to tell me what you think. Maybe there are other bits of gear that you found have not been very helpful over the years or maybe something I've mentioned you think is the best thing since sliced bread. Tell me in the comments and thank you again for your support. Thank you for watching. Hope you're doing good. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.